I wish I would have known this probably before going to school and before going to school several times. I wish I would have landed on permanent makeup way so earlier. Melanie's but... going to be here with us today telling us the five things she wishes she'd known before starting her permanent makeup career. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in. This is Marisol Medina and welcome to my channel. I have a very special guest with me today. I have Melanie from Nova Brows. How are you, Melanie? Good, how are you, Marisol? I am thrilled to meet Melanie in person. It just so happened that she was here in Orlando. I didn't know, we found out and we made it happen. So Melanie's gonna be here with us today telling us the five things she wishes she'd known before starting her permanent makeup career. Melanie is uh, stationed in Falls Church, right, Virginia, mm -hmm. and you've been doing it for six years. Yes. Right? And then I also have a new location in Stafford, Virginia. That's correct. Um, that's been open for a few months. Right. So go ahead and tell us the number one thing you wish you'd known before starting. So one thing I wish I would have known before starting this was how many different hats you have to wear. You know, you are not just an artist, so you're not just learning the skill and creating beautiful brows or beautiful permanent makeup. You also have to know about websites and Google ads and video editing, photo editing, um, just so many things you have to know and train, you know, not just on learning new skills and perfecting your skills, but learning all the business aspect of having your own business, really, because it's not just um, a technique that you're you're doing you are a business owner so you have mm -hmm. to know all of the aspects of owning your own business for sure for sure so what's number two all right so number two leading up to that one is um, that you have to be consistent with your marketing so one thing that I've struggled with is maybe like I'm having really good months so I'll back off on uh, on the advertising or the marketing and then it's like everything kind of starts to slow down. You're like, oh my God, wait a minute, what's happening? And then you have to pick it back up. And you know, that kind of back and forth is not good for your business. So you should be consistent, even if you're having good months, bad months, whatever, just be consistent. And that's gonna bring that traction and get those numbers going. That's amazing. I think that's very wise because a lot of business owners tend to think, well, I don't need to spend my marketing budget this month. I mean, I if you go. think about it, why does McDonald's still advertise? Why every time you go to a ball game, they have advertisements Coke. for Coke, M&M, yeah. like everybody knows M&Ms, everybody knows, you know, if they go to a gas station, you can pick up an M&M. Why do they still advertise for it? Because they want it to be fresh in your mind. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's very, very smart that you just said that. And also like, I feel like a lot of business owners, because you're wearing so many hats, you know, it's easy to slack with the creation of content yes. and, or maybe like uploading on, on, on Instagram or on Facebook. Uh, but if you consistently do it and you figure out ways to like, um, I guess, hack Develop time, systems right. and maybe outsourcing things that you, so it's, it's not so overwhelming. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. Number three. Um, number three is, okay, this one is very important and I know it now because I suffer. So it's taking care of your joints, your back, your neck. So I've developed arthritis in my neck, which is not fun. I have to go see a chiropractor every week and get massages. And I have actually a box, like a big box next to my bed with maybe 20, 30 different contraptions for my neck, oh. for my neck pain. So every night I try a different thing. I'm like, okay, tonight is, you know, the heating pad night. That's what's going to help me tomorrow is, you know, I got to do this thing that stretches my neck or whatever. So, and for different people, it's different things. So some people may suffer from like carpal tunnel or, you know, your vision. So they're taking care of your body, really important. And obviously doing it preventative, right? Like doing things, learning about what is going to prevent you from developing these things. What could have been a preventative measure to stop the... Good arthritis? question. So, so the position of my neck, right? Well, like when you're working, like when you're microblading, you're here and you're trying to get all the good angles. You want it to get really crisp. So having good posture, um, sometimes it helps if you get those like magnifying glasses so that you don't have to be so up close. You can be, you know, still have a, a straight neck and be working with it. You can still see clearly what you're doing. 
um, stretching, strengthening your muscles, strengthening your neck muscles, strengthening your core muscles. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe seeing like a physical therapist beforehand that can teach you these right. ways. Or a chiropractor too. Or maybe a chiropractor. Like absolutely. Ongoing care. Yeah. Yeah. And finding a good one too. Mm -hmm. Let's do number four. All right. Yeah. So number four, I would say is how the psychology aspect of dealing with the clientele is almost as important, if not more important than the actual skill. So you can be fantastic at what you do you know your skill set can be wonderful you can be creating the best brows but if you don't have that customer service piece where you're really being empathetic and understanding and really working with your clientele you're not going to get those good reviews you're not you're not going to get repeat customers people are not going to recommend you to their friends and their family so i think that is a huge piece you know we work with a lot of different personalities and it can be very challenging you know it's hard when you when you're doing something to somebody's face and they initially see themselves looking in a different way that they're not used to seeing themselves even if it's better yeah. you know it's shocking and it takes a while to get used to sometimes so it's really important to put yourself in you know in that person's shoes and just be calm you know helping them you know a lot of people deal with anxiety or things so helping them calm down and understand be understanding with them and just really having good customer service skills yeah that's a huge piece of what I do yeah. and why I think I've been successful and why I have great reviews because people really feel like they can trust me one and that I'm willing to work with them yeah yeah and you're empathetic and you don't mm -hmm. take things seriously you were telling me off camera before that people have told you really nasty things in the heat of the moment and then feeling like oh my gosh this person completely screwed up my face uh, you know they probably say things they don't mean and then later they, they yeah every they time apologize. they apologize I have uh, actually one funny story I have this client who's very beautiful very fancy lady she came in and she had prior permanent makeup done that I had to correct mm -hmm. right so she had these eyebrows and I fixed them and so when we're done she looks at herself in the mirror and she goes I look like Kim Kardashian and I don't <laughs> like Kim Kardashian and I was like oh my god she hates her brows like oh my gosh then she goes home and then two days later she calls me and she's like I love my eyebrows thank you so much <laughs> they're so much better you know but if in that moment I wouldn't have known how to handle that situation mm -hmm. you know it would have been a different story so you have to be you know understanding with people I think every permanent makeup artist is incredibly brave because mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, it's not, you're not cutting hair. You know, this is something permanent that is, isn't as easily uh, fixable as uh, right. other things. So you can't mess up. There's not a lot of room sure for error. You're sure what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And if you do, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> good job. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go on to number five. number five. All right. So number five, I would say, is how permanent makeup in itself can be its own career, lucrative, more lucrative than a lot of other careers. Um, even if you don't add any extra services, you can just focus on doing even eyebrows. Like I mostly do eyebrows and I've been lucky enough to be able to make over six figures doing it. Um, I originally was an RN, I don't know if we've mentioned that before, but I used to be a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And when a lot of people found out that I was switching over to permanent makeup, they all thought, aren't you going backwards like what are you doing why are you why is this what you're doing and I can tell you that I have more freedom of time I make more money obviously I set my own schedule mm -hmm. yeah like it's only been a blessing to do permanent makeup I've been able to provide for my needs my wants my desires travel you know buying a home my daughter yeah. like you know everything so it's been hard it hasn't been easy it's taken a lot of work a lot of dedication a lot of you know a lot of work but it's so much more rewarding when you are working for yourself and when the effort that you're putting towards something you're getting those benefits versus working for somebody you bust your butt for them and they don't appreciate it mm -hmm. they only want more mm -hmm. um, they don't compensate you for any of the extra things that you do yeah. where you'll see that if you work for yourself yeah yeah there's a funny there's like a, a little joke that goes around um, that there's an employee who's working his butt off for his his boss who comes in with like this super fancy sports car and then you know he's telling him look look if uh, it, or John whatever his name was 
if you bust your ass this quarter and you work late nights and you come in on Saturdays and you work on Sundays, I might just get another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, exactly. You know, he was thinking, oh, it's going to be me, but. Mm, I'll let you take a ride on, on my I'll car let you one day. I'll take a ride on my fancy sports <laughs> car. But yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good one. That yeah, so permanent one. makeup in itself. And I wish I would have known this probably before going to school and before going to school several times I wish I would have landed on permanent makeup way earlier but yeah everything happens at the right time good job awesome thank you all right so thank you for watching uh, go and follow Melanie at all of her social media it's gonna be linked below in the video uh, if you want to reach out she is on Instagram what's your handle Nova Browse Nova at Nova Browse. Browse Nova Browse she's an open book she's willing to uh, coach help you guys out on anything and uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Thank you so much for watching.